We are still reacting from Diddy's response to that disturbing video from 2016 where he is allegedly beating his ex-girlfriend Cassandra Ventura. And here to react to Diddy's reaction is acclaimed attorney Ben Chu, who famously represented Johnny Depp in another abuse case. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Everybody, this is a law and crime legal alert. Google incognito tracked users' browsing data without their knowledge. Yep, while well, Mass Tort Alliance, one of our legal sponsors, is actually helping users file for compensation due to Google users' privacy issues surrounding Google incognito. So if you've used Google incognito anytime since 2016, you can start your claim in less than 10 questions at incognitoclaims.com slash sidebar. So we are continuing this conversation regarding Sean. On Diddy Combs. Not a shocker there. I mean, he broke his silence and it wasn't in reaction to the lawsuits. It wasn't in reaction to the raids. Uh, we've heard him and his representative put out, put out statements before, but his reaction, first video that we've seen of him, this 54 year old rapper and producer addressing that disturbing video that was released uh, by CNN last week, a video that by all accounts purportedly shows him in a towel in a hotel Intercontinental Hotel in Los Angeles, savagely beating his ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura. This happened back in 2016. And you see him in the video, or allegedly in the video, although I have to tell you, it just looks so clear. Um, him throwing her to the ground, kicking her twice, dragging her, th throwing a vase in her direction. Um, and we already discussed that video. We, we shocked by it. Having said it, as I mentioned before on previous sidebars, it actually tracks verbatim with the language of Cassandra Ventura's complaint. She had filed a lawsuit against Diddy back in 2023. She settled with him the following day, but that description uh, of that 2016 event, it's almost verbatim. So it definitely gives credence to her claims, and I will say it also probably gives credence to the other allegations uh, that Diddy's facing. Not necessarily that he's you know, liable or guilty or responsible or did anything that he's accused of doing, but it's, we're definitely looking at it in a different context today than we were the other day. And so as we talk about this, his response on Instagram, breaking his silence, what did he say about this video? Take a listen. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you got to do that. I was f***ed up. I mean, I hit rock bottom. But I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy. I'm going to rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. So he publishes this on Instagram two days after CNN published that video. This is all in the wake of of these lawsuits being filed against him by multiple people, lawsuits about sexual misconduct, in the wake of his properties in L.A. and Miami being raided by federal agents, possibly pursuant to an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. We have to ask, what was the mindset here? Was this smart legally? Was it not? Well, for that, I want to bring in a very special guest. Fan favorite, my favorite, one of my favorites. I, if I say my favorite, then everybody else will be disappointed. But this is, I, I love having him on. One of the greatest. Ben Chu, acclaimed attorney, famously represented Johnny Depp, who, remember, he was accused of abuse as well. And obviously we had that incredible trial that we covered here on Law and & Crime. And, and Ben, I'm so happy to see you. Thank you for coming on. I, I'm just going to ask you, before we even get into your reaction, you know what? I'll tell you what. First, your reaction to the video from 2016, and then let me ask you this. Would you have had your client send out a video like this a day and a half, two days after that video was published? 
Jesse, first, great to be with you again. I was, as, as you were, horrified by the video. It's a scene of real brutality. It's one thing to read it and the printed page, which is bad enough, but to actually see it happen is, is horrifying. In answer to your question, I would not have had my client give a statement on the heels of the release of that video. And I certainly wouldn't have had him release that statement because I think it will be fodder for uh, future examinations and deposition testimony, none of which is going to be good for Mr. Combs. Because he essentially admitted that was him on the tape doing that while there's an ongoing federal investigation, while he's facing these lawsuits. I, I don't understand what the mindset was. Do you think he... His attorneys are saying, what did you do? Or do you think his attorneys thought there could be some sort of legal advantage to it? I mean, he didn't have to respond, right? He didn't have to say anything. No, Jesse, he didn't. And my guess, and it's total speculation, was that this was the product either of his own volition or that of his PR team. But the the kind of top-notch criminal lawyers you often have on your show would, would certainly have advised him to stay quiet because as you mentioned, he's just thrown out the window any potential objection to the authenticity of the video. Also, I think what he said was really not helpful at all. What, what about it was not helpful at all? What was his, his, and remember his explanation, not necessarily blaming substance abuse or drugs, but kind of putting a context into what, what he did. Yes, I don't think that was helpful. As you know, uh, being intoxicated is only a defense to certain specific intent crimes like first degree murder. So saying that he was drunk uh, doesn't help him legally, under, undercuts the sincerity or apparent sincerity of any apology. But what really struck me as disingenuous was he said he was disgusted at the time of 2016. Well, if he really were disgusted by his actions back in 2016, why did he wait until 2024 to come clean? He, he Not only did he deny them, but he called her essentially a money grubber, that this was all a, a, a desire for a payday. That doesn't sound like somebody who's disgusted with himself. Ben, I wish I could give you a high five right now because you nailed it right on the head. I have been saying this from the beginning. He didn't issue, when all the lawsuits were coming out, he didn't say, I wait for my day in court. I'll allow my lawyers to speak. No comment at this time. He issued a statement. Up, I remember posted on Instagram denying it. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged back in December. After the Cassandra Ventura lawsuit, after he was being sued by multiple people, flat out denied it, said it was lies. And, you know, like, obviously, we didn't see any of the evidence yet. There was certain photos that we saw uh, and things like that. But he knew this tape existed. There is an allegation in Cassandra Ventura's complaint that he purchased the footage for $50,000 so that no one would see it. That's what, for me, doesn't ring true. And by the way... Because there is a three-year statute of limitations on assault in California, if he really felt so bad, he could have gone to authorities and turned himself in and admitted it. So that's the part, I, I agree with you, Ben, that I think people are looking at and saying it just it, it's so hollow. Yeah, absolutely reeks of insincerity. And I think you really made an excellent point that in light of the statute of limitations expiring, as to Ms. the beating of Ms. Ventura, I think the implications will be for the other accusers who've come forward because it's, it certainly gives more credence to their allegations. And Meredith Firetog, who represents Cassandra Ventura uh, and other women who have sued Combs, uh, released a statement saying that the apology was more about himself than the many people he's hurt. 
When Cassie and multiple other women came forward, he denied everything and suggested that his victims were looking for a payday, that he was only compelled to apologize once his repeated denials were proven false, shows his pathetic desperation, and no one will be swayed by his disingenuous words. Ben, would you agree with me that if that video wasn't so clear, if it was grainy, if he could deny it was him, A, we might not have even seen a statement from Diddy, or B, he would have also categorically denied it? If the video was grainy, you think he'd still come out and say, I'm... I regret all my actions. I'm ashamed. No, Jesse, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think he thought uh, he was caught red-handed, which is why I suppose he paid the $50,000 to try to catch and kill that particular video. So, no, I think he he felt he was caught red-handed and thought it was in his best interest to give the statement, but I think it was another misjudgment on his part. And that, that that's the allegation, uh, that he paid it. What, what would If he said to you, if he's your client, Ben, I want to say something. I have to respond to this. What would you have advised him to do? I would have advised him not to say anything. Of course, uh, as with testifying, ultimately it's the client's decision to to speak or not to speak. But um, I think I would have recommended in the strongest possible way not to make any statement at this point. But is it also a mistake of his legal counsel? Let me be fair. I don't know them. I'm just reading the tea leaves. If they knew this video existed, if they know what else is out there, to issue a blanket denial when something like this could come out that is very strong, either A, it seems to me they didn't know about it, or B, they weren't thinking that far ahead? Yeah, that, that's, that's absolutely right. And we, we don't want to denigrate counsel without knowing the facts. But if, right. if they, in fact, knew that this evidence were, was out there, Wow. I mean, no, that, that's not a good idea. And that's why you, every time there's a lawsuit or pending litigation, everybody's like, I can't comment. I can't comment. There's pending litigation. There's, pending. there's a reason. You don't want it to be used against you. you, you and, and I have to imagine, Ben, if he's called uh, to the stand in one of these civil lawsuits or he decides to take the stand, wouldn't these prior statements of flat-out denials be used against him? Absolutely, Jesse. I mean, I, I think that would be – I think – as you do as well, I think the use of audio tape and videotape is so powerful because obviously you show this video, but you would show you would show all of the prior statements and you would take a lot of time before the jury and you would play the video and the audio as much as you possibly could because it almost doesn't matter what he says if to the extent he testifies. It almost doesn't matter how he reacts because these audio tapes, these statements really speak for themselves. And, and I have to be clear, and, and I'm, I'm glad you have you, I have you on for this specific point. You, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, I remember, and I'll be completely honest with you, Ben, when it first was launched, when, when I first heard about it, when I first heard it was going to trial, I struggled with the idea. I said, why would an A-list actor like Johnny Depp, why would he want to go to trial? Why would he want all of this exposed? And as the trial progressed, I saw this was an opportunity for him to essentially clear his name, to hold uh, his counterparty, show me the evidence, let the world see what you have, and let me hear your allegations. And it was not only a battle in the court of law, it was a battle in the court of opinion, court of public opinion, and in the end, it was a victory. And I think I, I, at the end, I completely understood. And it seems to me that when you have other high-profile people who are accused of you know, sexual abuse or physical abuse, they are taking a, a, a playbook, and I don't know if J- D- Diddy's doing this, but taking a playbook off of the Johnny Depp model and saying, I'm going to go on the offensive now, I'm going to deny, but there is a difference, right? There is a difference, Ben, right? Yes, there's a huge difference. I mean, among other things, there were no other Me Too's, and that was one of the things that really distinguished Johnny's case from a lot of these others that after Ms. Heard first made the allegations of abuse in 2016, there were crickets. There was no other woman who came forward. And then in 2018, when she effectively remade and amplified the allegations, there was no one else who came forward. And I think, uh, I think that really distinguishes it um, from, from all of these cases. And in fact, the evidence came forward that it was, in fact, Ms. Heard who was... Uh, responsible for domestic violence, not Mr. Depp. But those were 
particular facts. And if you have a client who is not innocent, um, you know, you, you can't you can't employ that type of strategy. Which makes it interesting that he settled the Cassandra Ventura lawsuit one day after it was filed. I have to imagine it was so that it doesn't get to this point where evidence like this is released for the trial, for the jury to see or for the world to see. Because let's be clear, if he really did purchase the tape for $50,000 during the course of litigation, he'd have to hand that over. Absolutely. And I think there's no problem. I think it was smart of him to settle that case because the facts were horrific and there's no point in going to trial and really uh, destroying what's left of your reputation and your business uh, by going to trial when when you were going to be found liable. But it was the statement after the denial, right? He could have just settled it and allowed that settlement to speak for itself. But the fact that he went on the offensive and denying and denying nine. Now let's talk about the other lawsuits. Do you think there is more incentive for him to settle these lawsuits, to get rid of them as soon as possible? Um, or if he does that, will that look worse now in light of the video, in light of his apology? What would you think would be the right move for him on the litigation front? On the litigation front, I think settlement settlement makes it's really the only option. I think you settle everything and stay quiet and go to ground for a, a long time, and then hope that um, one day your work will speak for itself. But I would I would lie low. I, I there's no upside for him defending these cases at this point. Do you think there is a chance more people could come forward after this video was posted? Absolutely. I, I think whenever you have a high-profile event, you are going to have more people coming forward uh, because they will be emboldened by it, which I think is another reason to settle because as long as these cases go on, they're going to garner a lot of attention. They're going to garner a lot of news coverage and it's it's going to bring more more accusers and, and to be clear and I, I have to say this you know he hasn't been charged with a crime as of yet he hasn't been found liable in a court of law with respect to any of these allegations they are allegations at this point but clearly things have changed it is a different story than we're having today and ben before i let you go i know you're not a, a criminal defense attorney um but look there is an ongoing federal investigation we're not sure exactly what they're looking into if it is purportedly sex trafficking i believe a video like that will play a, a pivotal role in that case um and i think that his denial his denials and also his apology would play a pivotal role do you think the timing of the release of this video tells us anything about that federal investigation? That's a great question, Jesse. I, I don't feel I can speculate about that, but it's, it's, it's bad news for him all around. It, it really is. And that video is ingrained in my mind. It's ingrained in a lot of people's minds. And the one person I keep thinking about, Cassandra Ventura, because she had to endure that. And you know one of the things that we keep hearing, Ben? The way she, um, the way she reacted to getting physically assaulted, many people say this wasn't the first time, and it, it was so brazen how he came out and, and did that uh, in an open hotel. Um, but also the idea of her response, uh, it was almost like this is I've, I've I've had this happen to me before. Would you think that's a fair assessment? I do, and the image that really will stick with me, and we didn't have the audio. But she was lying motionless yeah. on the ground while he kicked her. Not, not that there would have been justification for kicking her had she been moving, but he was kicking someone who was completely prone and vulnerable. And that, unfortunately, is, is a, an image I'll never be able to get out of my mind. Yep. Ben Shu, great having you on. So good seeing you, sir. Thank you so much for your perspective. Anytime. Thank you so much, Jesse. And that is all we have for you here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.